Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Zen, and today we have a very special interview with Lusitania on all the brand new traits and ancillaries for RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6.4. So welcome once again to the channel, Lusitania. Hey Red, what a glorious day. <laughs> what a <laughs> You said you weren't going to mention Glorious again. <laughs> no, but well, yeah, welcome back to the channel. It is great to see you again. Obviously, you guys may know Lusitania from Europa Barbarorum, so uh, he's been working on mods for many, many years. And uh, would you say a specialist in traits and ancillaries? Well, yeah, I can say that a bit, although I've been working on it since 2018 learning from the Europa Barbarum team. But uh, yeah, after this was a really a major project that I did for Risk, because we started from zero with the vanilla traits and now we have a usually complex system full of uh, mechanics and the really unique traits. It's actually, it's actually been really fun watching you play the campaign. Yeah, and, uh, seeing the traits that you get and reading the descriptions. Yeah, and I think for me personally, it just adds so much extra to the characters. I mean, like if we just open any character here and have a look at them, um, like you can you can build stories around these guys, can't you? Really, like they've got so many traits now. Like this guy hates Macedonians. Uh, he likes raiding. <laughs> He's considerate but also pessimistic. Uh, so yeah, you can sort of build stories and characters around your characters in the game now, which I think is awesome. Yeah, that's right. Um, we actually, I actually have been doing a major re rework since the last version. So, um, like previously, I would watch players, um, like uh, watch uh, their campaigns and videos and see what could be improved, but. Uh, now I, I've given up on that because it's so different that um, there's no point to be, to be honest. The, the triggers have been changed a lot of them. Uh, I've done a major rework of the descriptions because I felt like many of them were a bit basic or not as fun. And uh, with the help of ChatGPT, I managed to improve a lot of descriptions. like. Uh, ChatGPT didn't did all the work, but uh, I've um, asked it to like uh, with the ROM traits, please rework this in a better way. Let's say with a better flow. So some of the descriptions that we had previously were uh, like they lack um, fun. Let's say they weren't. Uh, as uh, readable as they, as many are now. Uh, for example, the mercenary captain that you have now on your character, it's one of the improved descriptions. Because, uh, yeah. and uh, honestly, these new descriptions, it, it feels like uh, it's actually someone telling a story. Yeah, and it's it's always good to have that character of the um, original and vanilla as well because. Like, a lot of them in vanilla were, were tongue-in-cheek and, you know, very, uh, very just sort of humorous. And, like, I mean, my, fav my favorite one isn't even a, a trait description. It's, the f it's when you have zero influence. Let's see if we can find someone with zero influence who's a Roman. Uh, well, not a Roman. These are guys are Illyrians. But is there anyone with zero influence? Yeah, this... <laughs> a stuffed olive has more influence than this man. It could choke someone important and change history. <laughs> So yeah, I uh, I always like the uh, the character and stuff um, added into them, but that's that's awesome. So should we go through first the the Illyrian? So firstly, you've obviously with the addition of the Illyrians, you've basically reworked what Illyrian, Anatolian, and Thracian traits, haven't you? Yes, that's right. Uh, most of the tra the Thracian. Traits were already done for, from the previous uh, release, but uh, we also had the new tribal traits and descriptions. So f during the last months, we have done a lot of work adding more traits for the Illyrians. Yeah. Uh, also added a new mechanic called 
the cattle traits, which falls the Europa Barbarum mechanic for many barbarian factions, as you have it there. However, that that's also one of the mechanics that I've done a rework on the descriptions, because um, for basically for two reasons, uh, the re description was just too big, and uh, the Rome Remaster. Uh, user interface uh, makes it that uh, huge text texts are uh, harder to read so i yeah. decreased the size overall and make made it a bit more interesting to read also no, avoiding cool. some redundant stuff yeah sorry no yeah that's cool that's really good um and yeah there's like as you can see there's a load more traits because you've added in a load of a load more personality traits haven't you so obviously before we used to have what bright uh, bright magnetic and vigorous and then whether they were selfish or whether selfless so we've got bright magnetic vig vigorous here uh selfish and pessimistic but in terms of other personality traits like what else have you added in that's uh, that will come and go i guess depending on what happens with the general yeah, well, um, just want to make a point that let's be careful with saying a load of traits, because <laughs> um, I know that many have stated that uh, they feel a bit so they don't want to be overwhelmed with, with traits, especially with managing such a big campaigns nowadays. Mm. Well, I added a few more personality traits, like know your characters, they might be dutiful, they might be... Um, uh, more distracted and get penalties for that. One of the major things I've done is uh, added a few more traits for uh, your governors, like like in Europa Barbarorum. If your general stays in a long time as a governor in the city, he will stay. He will get uh, attuned to the city, like he'll get accustomed to the city and get traits from that, which is really interesting because. Before you would just leave your generals inside the city and nothing would happen. Of course, if he, if the city has an academy or better, he would start getting some better traits and auxiliaries. Now it's a bit more interesting. But uh, my main point is uh, not to create traits that demand you that you uh, take your generals away for some time or that you need to track them every single turn because i know how um, overwhelming it can be so it's it's a bit hard to manage but i've been doing a lot of work on that yeah also cool. just want to talk uh, about the, the effects for the traits like as you can see there that general has zero commands zero influence in fact he has negative command and influence yeah <laughs> Well, it's been a really hard fight because uh, I have feedback from uh, developer, game mod developers telling me all oh, the generals have too much influence, too much command. Others just tell me, oh, they have too few command, too few influence. It's really hard to balance this. And I think we have uh, a nice balance right now because most of your generals, they want to be... Uh, uh, in incredible, they want to be Alexander the Great, but it's also expected that if you pick a general and you start going from city to city conquering a, an entire region, of course your general will have some really good traits. And that's the point. About the, that trait, we can see the Herd Keeper trait. Um, just to give a small explanation on that, it's a mechanic that the more um, increase, the more benefits it will give you on farming, but it will also reduce your uh, movement. Mm. And it also impacts uh, how healthy your general can become and things like that. So it's a nice mechanic. Yeah, cool. But the most important one is that last trait, King of Illyria. So some factions, some Illyrian factions now can become their faction leader can get that trait. For the Illyrian kingdom, they already start with the, the cities that they need to get the trait. Yeah. But for example, yeah. imagine that Ma Macedonia conquers uh, their capital. The next uh, Illyrian king, he won't get that trait because for them, they don't have uh, the regions that they want to become Illy the king of uh, all Illyria. Yeah. The Dardanians also need some other cities. So it's a nice mechanic overall. 
yeah cool so, so that is uh that so that's kind of based on the faction starting position i guess and what they need to uh to become uh, a king of illyria i guess which is pretty cool um yeah that's nice that's a really cool trait and to pick up on what you were saying before obviously trying to avoid traits like movement moving characters between areas for certain traits and stuff like that obviously if you're a smaller empire you can probably do that to pick up a few traits if you move someone to an academy etc but um like i said like like you said before i think it's really good now that you can just leave your general in a city and i'm assuming depending on the buildings of the city and what else is in the city in terms of troops in terms of you know what uh what retinue they have to like and obviously their personality they're going to generate different traits based on the city well to be honest right now it mostly depends on the on generic buildings like academies theaters a few temples here and there but i haven't added much triggers for other buildings because uh, as uh, the fans know, the race team, we still have to work on the buildings. So there's no point in the creating complex mechanics for buildings that may or not be there in the yeah. next version. Yeah, cool. That that makes sense. Completely makes sense. Yeah, so that's a pretty funny one. Uh, Dalmatian carrots were uh, f famous, apparently. So... <laughs> uh, we had that trait. It's actually um, quite a nice trait. It gives your generals one fertility and one eight points. Yeah. However, it's limited to only six traits. Only, I mean, only only six generals can get it, basically. Cool. In the whole in the whole world, or in your faction? In the whole world. How how do, how do you get it then? Do you have to go into uh, Dalmatia and eat some carrots? <laughs> well, let me take a, a look. But um, it's basically that you need to be, uh, yeah, you need to be part of the Illyrian culture, and you need to be either in Delmio, which is a settlement, or you ne your general needs to end. Uh, the eastern inside a, a region that has the resource Illyrian. So basically, your generals that end their turn inside a, a city that is part of Illyria, and those uh, regions, they will get chances of getting the truth. <laughs> nice. I like that. So moving on from the uh, the Dalmatian carrots, <laughs> we'll talk about something that's also cultural, and that now is the traits too within the uh, within the system. So as you can see, Mytilos, the Taulantian here, uh, he has Illyrian heritage, so of course he's Illyrian, but he's also a Taulanto Taulantioi, which is uh, the tribe that he comes from, and all of these traits have been pretty meticulously added in for the Greeks, the Illyrians, the Thracians, to say what tribe these people come from. And you can see that there's, of course, like a bit of history in these, which is awesome as well. I mean, if we have a look, at this guy you can see his parthenoi a major illyrian tribe located between the greek cities of apollonia and epidamnos we've also got an actual greek guy in here so we can see a greek one and he is antipatrean uh, which is the man this man is from antipatria founded by cassander who was one of the many successor kings after alexander died so really cool to see all of those like uh, individual uh, historical sort of notes in there for every single character yeah, I agree. It was a lot of work adding them. Sometimes I felt that I was working more on in race than in my actual daytime <laughs> job. <laughs> but because um, it's like hundreds of uh, city, regional, tribal traits, lots of stuff. The team also did uh, amazing work with the research, like uh, uh, developers like uh, Mausolos, Chatel, Chorlav. They did a lot of research on that. Yeah. And, uh, well, yeah, it's really nice work. Uh, we plan on improving it uh, further with uh, uh, everyone having uh, their own uh, cultural traits. Uh, yeah, good thing that you showed the uh, spy. Can you show that again, please? Yeah. Because uh, uh, we noticed that um, 
the Asians, they were getting the Italian uh, cultural traits, which was uh, sta being standardized and assigned by the game, because they didn't have any. So we also had that. Uh, well, that mic, uh, honestly, I know yeah. players will abuse that mechanic, because I know that players were already using, like, sending five generals to a city, <laughs> just so that uh, the city or the the culture the culture will increase faster. So well, at least now if you want as a player, you can also send your uh, spies and uh, diplomats to the city. Well, good point is that uh, there there are also triggers for diplomats and spies that they can get inside cities. So it won't be all bad. You you might get some. Um, further traits and auxiliaries with that while also abusing a bit uh, the mechanic yeah but uh, yeah it's it's still better honestly uh, like seeing your diplomats spies and seeing that they have a bit more char character than before yeah. sounds also Can pretty cool service? yeah definitely and uh, I mean to, to abuse it you would you would need to do like like you can see the settlement conversion strength here is 60 so if you were say dorian like to get it past 60 you'd need a load of spies so <laughs> you need a lot of people to do it so i don't think many people are going to abuse it too much and especially with this version where yes, my lord. religion doesn't matter that much compared to it did in 0 0.5 so uh, I, I think it, I think it'll be fine, but it's nice to see them get some extra traits because you hardly do ever look at their actual traits. You just send them about, and I've actually started actually looking at these guys' traits when I when I get going now, which uh, definitely helps out because you're like, oh, well, this guy's good at opening gates, but he's not good at actually looking at armies or something. So I should send him to open gates and stuff like that. So. Now you get a bit of character with your guys too, which is uh, nice to see and just shows the attention to detail of uh, of the mod team really there. Yeah, that's right. Like previously, no one was really paying attention to the Asian traits because what was there to pay attention to? They didn't have any traits. But uh, I started doing some work on that. Actually, started in Europa Barbarorum creating traits for them, and uh, now with, with Reese, I just uh, put the, the work I did in Reese and uh, added a few more traits, but uh, especially on Celeris, we still have uh, very little for the agents, so I plan in the future to add a bit more for them. Yeah, cool, definitely, but, uh, that would be awesome. But I also did a major rework on their traits, especially for the diplomats, because I know how hard it was to get bad traits just uh, just no, with the, uh, into the AI uh, rejecting your your diplomatic um, offers. So we've done quite a good rework on that. Oh, fantastic. Now that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks to, to the community because um, they didn't actually provide that much feedback, to be honest. I was expecting a bit more because... Uh, <laughs> I don't have that much time to play, so and uh, to make a really good system with traits, we need to play a lot and see how it is. And uh, well, to be honest, I barely can uh, stay in a campaign for long because I start to start getting a list of things that I want to change or improve, so I <laughs> go and uh, update it. But um, yeah, I got some really nice feedback for that. Also got feedback for. Uh, the anger trait because we were getting a lot of general of angry generals <laughs> so we updated that as well yeah cool and i think like um i mean my favorite trait that i've got so far was antiochus sabinas in the seleucid campaign and he was like so the previous king was an absolute legend who basically just built the whole empire up and made it prosperous, uh, built huge projects everywhere, expanded it massively, destroyed the Ptolemy single-handedly, and then his son, who became the king, was just an uh, just like pure angry, <laughs> like selfish, like hated everyone else. And uh, then he got he got um, 
I think he was Antiochus the Angry when he first took over, but then he got the trait Antiochus Zabinas, and that was his name, which is like the black sheep of the family because he was so obviously different to his father, and I just thought that was so cool. Um, and I think all this work goes to show like those little stories that you can make with your characters, which is so cool if you actually do pay attention to the traits. Yeah, that's that's right. It can be really cool with that. And um, I added a few more traits for that as well. For example, we discussed that before. Uh, if your uh, general becomes a great general with a lot of experience, his sons may get some additional traits for that, uh, which is, for example, the military upbringing prodigy, mm. which gives the uh, general plus one command. Basically, it just shows that uh, he has been raised by war. Like he has been going with his father from camp to camp, uh, thinking uh, about some ancient generals like Hannibal Barca, Caligula, I think, we, which were raised uh, by the army, let's say. <laughs> but yeah. um, it's not the only one, for example, you may there's also another trait that you might get, which is uh, military upbringing disappointment. <laughs> which means that uh, basically uh, the son was raised in the army as well by, uh, by his father, but uh, his actions have been disappointing on, yeah. on the battlefield, which gives uh, minus one command and moral. However, if that general then with that trait goes to battle and actually wins some battles, it will get uh, another trait that will remove the other one called military upbringing proven valor. Yeah. Which will give him one command. So it's stuff like that. And uh, I also haven't forgotten uh, people prefer to have their generals become scholars. Mm. And the sons of scholars will also get a trait called scholarly upbringing, which. Uh, Gives them plus one management for the sons that have been raised in the, with the scholars, that and everything. Yeah. So as you can see here, we've got Antigonus. Uh, this is Antigonus Gennatus, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh, we've got Antigonus's son, Hal Halcyonius. <laughs> I'm sorry, Greek people. Um, We've got him, and he, of course, is an Antigonid. Um, this man is a direct descendant from Antigonus I, Monothalmus, one of the generals of Alexander the Great. So, yeah, you've got the, the dynasty traits there now as well. But we can also see that, obviously, Antigonus was a pretty good general, uh, and we've got interested in military studies here, which, of course, is probably linked to... Uh, and he's also pretty good at a lot of things, so probably linked to his father being quite good. At warfare as well. Those traits that interested in uh, study, military studies and everything, they come from Rome Total Realism 7, some really interesting traits. So I picked it up and expanded it further, had more levels, so it's a really interesting trait. I also like the ancillaries that you are showing. They also have their descriptions improved, and also, we talked about that before, the images. Because now it's not the Rome remastered standard image for every single ancillary. <laughs> we had yeah. a, um, yeah. Thanks to uh, Naked Spur and others like Mosca, I've added a few more uh, images for the ancillary. So now they actually feel more unique and fancy. But yeah. uh, can you show the um, Macedonian faction leader again? Antigonus. Because I just want, right. yeah, Antigonus. Because uh, I just want to explain one thing for the players. Right now you are playing the beta version, and uh, I actually have updated it today. In, in the next version, Antigonus will actually have the Gonatas. So we'll, his name there will be Antigonus the uh, second Gonatas, with the biography traits. Uh, oh, cool. Because uh, we we removed the second from the names list like things like uh, like that were causing some issues but uh, there is no problem like i've used a different way basically i just gave uh, him um, a trait that gives him an epithet 
which changes the trait, uh, well, the name to that, uh, to what I want. Uh, so it now get, gets that, which is really interesting. And uh, he's also like, Antigonus Gonata is also famous for defeating the Celts that were invading Macedonia. So yeah. um, right now his command doesn't actually so much like one command for a, a military leader that was actually victorious and pretty good. So uh, I also improve on that and in the next version it will start with a f plus five command bonus. Yeah, cool. And like I like all these sort of um, these traits as well that are like hates these sort of <laughs> hates Dardanians or this guy hates clever clever Greeks so you get plus one morale for all troops and two command fighting against Greeks he despises Dardanians so two command when fighting against Dardania <laughs> he loathes vile Epirus <laughs> so plus three command when fighting against Epirus I mean pretty obvious why he would uh, why he would loathe Epirus even though he did uh, honor Pyrrhus's dead body, but uh, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, cool, really cool. I believe there's a guy yeah, in Dardania, so. right? Beto, Beto the Mean. Let's see if we can uh, have a look at him because he's got like a hundred of these. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, those uh, fear eight traits. It's actually been a quite a major rework for me because Vanilla, Vanilla Rome actually has some really generic. Uh, hate fear traits yeah. for the cultures which was really overpowered for example you would get uh, hate barbarians traits and traits and uh, your general would have a bonus against every single barbarian faction <laughs> yeah yeah so now it's completely different so, so every single faction can have that trait and it's not only if you fight the faction now, even if your general is, st is uh, staying at the city, like, uh, kilometers away from the fight, let's say, he can get that trait. Of course, it depends on his uh, traits. Like, uh, is he a coward? If he's yeah. a coward, he might get a trait, he might start fearing the, the faction if you are, uh, if he's at war with them. Mm. But uh, if he's brave, he might actually start uh, to hate them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, this guy, like, Close. despises Liberians, despises Histrians, despises Iopodes' ways, abhors Labeateans, and hates Macedonians. <laughs> he's just... He, he's earned his name. Let's, let's say that, shall we? He's earned his name. Uh, what a look. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, when I... Uh, I ask uh, Mazolos, because I was adding some traits to the starting characters for the for Illyria and he told me basically they hated everyone <laughs> every single neighbor yeah uh, um... Mausolos and especially that has been quite helpful in adding descriptions for these eight field traits because uh, we have to remember that uh, these are about 600 uh, traits so it's a lot of descriptions yeah I can imagine I can imagine um no really cool and you also get these like uncomfortable near macedonians which is minus one ca one command when fighting against them because he doesn't like them he's, he's scared of them um which is cool uh but yeah no awesome really 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 uh really nice and like i say all of these unique traits just add to the story like this guy being a thunatai this man hails from thunatai a dardanian subtribe who inhabit the eastern regions and he's also Dardanian, you know, it just adds completely to the stories of your characters and the campaign, um, which is just fantastic. I absolutely love it. Yeah, that's right. It's really interesting. It adds a lot more flavor to your character, like uh, seeing what you fuse. So, yeah, in a way, you also have to track it a bit because if you have a general that is, uh, I mean, if he fears um, Macedonia, you are not. You might not want to send him against Macedonia, because he will have uh, bonuses against it. Yeah. So yeah, has a bit more um, depth into it. But uh, there's also a few other things that will be really interesting for players in the next version. I would say the most important one 
is the all, like the ones related to the Pan Hellenic Games, because previously we had the Olympic trades, yeah, which uh, was already quite fun. But uh, since then I had pretty much all the important uh, Greek uh, um, Olympic trades, let's say for the one for the Panathea for Athens and uh, a lot a bunch of them that I present in the developer diary, which is really fun. Mm. But also had a few more uh, interesting features like um, the strategic. Now your journals can also be bad s strategically, so they will get models on that. So I've been trying to balance it more. And there are also some other really nice traits for that. Yeah, cool. Julian. And I just wanted to say as well, guys, like if you are someone who doesn't ever look at traits and you you know it's too overwhelming for you or whatever, and you don't want to role play, you just want to get out there, do things. That's fine. That's fine. Everyone plays differently. Um, you just go on the stats on this side rather than traits and followers, and just judge it based on that. Obviously. Uh, Lusitanio and I would prefer to read all the traits and have a look through our characters and discern what they're like and, and try and make up little stories about them. But if you're not like that, that's fine. Just come on here, have a look. Oh, this guy's got two troop morale. That's pretty good. He's probably going to be a general. This guy is minus five taxes. So again, he's not going to be good inside a city, uh, although he, he can't get bribed, which is good for a general again. So you can just go on to that, or maybe we'll have a look at another person like this guy who's a zero zero zero, but he does have four law, so he's going to be good at governing in a city that's maybe a little bit unruly, that sort of thing. So you can just come on here and have a look if you don't want to go through um, go through the traits, so you, you don't want to role play. But I would recommend immersing yourselves with your characters, guys. It does get really really fun. Yeah, that's right. Like, uh, if you don't care about that, which is understandable, because there's a, already a lot of stuff to pay attention, just don't. Uh, just check uh, which bonuses your generals have and uh, go with it. But uh, I would say that you'll be missing quite a lot, because you, like with four turns per year, you really can get that to your generals. And there's a, a whole lot of traits that they can get, like. They can, your general can be a nervous general, it can even be get frozen by anxiety, which gives a minus to command and minus to morale. Mm. And then uh, some very special and new traits that I've added. And now, uh, of course, the it's three new traits uh, that are bad for your generals and two that are good. Which do you prefer? Do you want me to talk about the good first? <laughs> or the bad? Let's talk about... Let's go bad to good. We'll go bad to good. All right, good. So, uh, in the next version, uh, your generals, if they start getting uh, like um, uh, high on command and influence, they might start getting some bad traits. Uh, this is also to you know, prevent uh, all your generals to become... Uh, great generals because we don't want uh, every single general to become uh, Alexander but uh, also to be realistic because they will start uh, abusing their power also at the same time I've made it sure that they won't get these traits at least some of them while they have uh, like very few command and influence because that will be a bit mm. unfair for you as a player but for example, your generals can become infamous for favoritism, that is for favoring uh, uh, other their friends for special treatment and recogni recognition, yeah. which would get them minus one influence, but minus, sorry, plus one influence, but minus one command and morale. They can also get uh, infamous for being for cronism which is basically surrounding themselves with friends and political allies. Which is uh, like nice for their poli political influence, but uh, if you have a commander who surrounds himself with uh, only his friends and not the best people for the job, uh, the army is going to suffer from lack of talent and competence in the roles. Yeah. 
So you get you get plus one influence, but minus two command and minus one morale. And then he might become famous for nepotism, that is, for uh, appointing uh, family members and relatives to positions of power within the army, which uh, will all, will get you some really good influence. But minus two command, minus one morale, minus one law. So yeah. Like it's um, a nice way of uh, trying to uh, reduce the amount of uh, nice uh, and powerful generals that you might get. Yeah, uh, I understand that players might get a bit uh, angry with this, but uh, these are based on historical things that generals would actually do, and uh, it's also limited. Like, um, for example. Uh, these three traits, each one of them is limited to four. That is, only four generals can get one. Uh, can get them, I mean. Uh, they are not uh, anti-traits of each other, so basically one general could get all these three, which will be quite drastic. Mm. But uh, it can happen. However, it's only every trait can only appear four times in the old map. So I'm not expecting this to be a, a huge dram dramatic change. Yeah, now that's cool. And I um, yeah, I think you know the best thing you can do, guys, if you do get one of the traits or all three for a character, is just keep winning victories <laughs> with them, and eventually they'll, you know, they're still going to be okay, aren't they? You know, it's not going to be uh, a nightmare. And also, command, like command, is just not like. Th really that important like management and influence are really important for your governors but like command on the battlefields is just a morale boost right it's just a morale boost within the influence range so like it's as long if, if you don't even have your general near your troops it's not going to make a difference anyway so you know uh it's not that obviously it'll make a difference in auto resolve if you're auto resolving but in terms of actually playing out the battle you guys at home you, I'm pointing to you, you have 12 star command because you are a human and you have a brain. <laughs> the AI doesn't have a brain, so <laughs> you have better command than them anyway. So it, it won't be too 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 bad if your command gets reduced, um, in my opinion anyway. <laughs> yeah, that, that's right, right. It's not too bad, especially because the way I did it, the generals will only start getting these traits when they start getting really good in influence and command. So, like, it will decrease a bit, but it won't be that drastic. But yeah. uh, uh, they also have some new traits that will give them bonus, like uh, uh, inspiring presence. Basically, they will inspire their troops just uh, with their presences. Mm. With their presence, I mean, of course, this depends on their charisma and experience, but it gives them one influ plus one influence and plus one morale, which is nice and uh, resourceful. Basically, your general can become resourceful and uh, get the other level very resourceful, which is good for uh, city management and also command. So yeah, it's a nice. Uh, this type of traits had some nice uh, characteristics to your journals. Yeah, definitely. Uh, That's however, cool. yeah, it's uh, also limited. Like inspiring presence, only eight journals can get it, and the resourceful only ten. So I don't expect this to be a major thing, but it will be a nice thing to to see when it finally appears. Yeah, fantastic. So I think. We'll All right. Well, apart from that, so for think... the Illyri for the Illyrians, there's also a few nice ancillaries, like the Illyrian snake and all. But uh, there what? aren't that many, to be honest. So moving on from our chat about the Illyrians, we are here now as the Seleucids. We've uh, we've popped through a few turns as the money might suggest <laughs> in the top right um but yeah we're just going to show you this guy has actually won a great victory against the ptolemies so we're going to show you some of the military traits and talk about obviously how you might get good or bad military traits depending on what might happen so for example this guy is a blooded commander so he's commanded an army for the first time in battle um 
but that doesn't re- that's kind of neutral but it's showing you that he's just had one real battle so far he's also got bloody this man enjoys the sight of blood and he was also injured in that battle which i think is really cool to see he's been grievously injured while in the midst of battle like a broken horse he lies upon the ground he needs to rest to fully recover so if your general gets that minus two hit points is quite a big deal so make sure that you are resting that general if they do get that enemy camp captured of course we've seen those ones before uh but stung by a scorpion as well which um do you want to talk about that one lusitanio so yeah, uh, Mosobus and Iwata did a lot of research uh, for uh, new traits for the Anatolian factions, and that's one of my fav- favorite ones. Basically, there were so many scorpions around the carrier <laughs> that uh, we decided to honor that, let's say, with that trait. It's uh, isn't too much, besides a very important thing, of course, that is the uh, having plus one to your general hit points, which means that your general will have more chances to survive in battle, which is always a pretty good thing. Of course, there are dozens of uh, special traits added for Anatolian factions. One of my favorite ones, uh, and funniest ones to be honest, is the heavy Cappadocian accent. Basically, yeah. your general, if he's Cappadocian, he might get uh, that trait. Which is uh, just uh, being mocked by Greeks for having a, a Navy accent. <laughs> and speaking Greek. Yeah, no, that's that's so, cool. More guy. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, in terms of these these military traits, though, that they that they get, um, different things depending what happens in battle and the victory or the loss will result in different traits coming, right? Yeah, that's that's right. Um, as I said before, I had the new trait, which uh, right now your generals they can become a good strategist, but I noticed that uh, we didn't have a bad strategist trait as well, so I mm-hmm. added it with three levels. Uh, the description is actually really cool, so uh, you gotta be careful with your generals. Of course, the IE, the artificial intelligence, will also have that. So. It can be quite tricky, but um, it's always nice. I think you can show some of the traits that your general had, uh, well, that they got following those victories. Yeah, so, um, like I say, you you really want to be careful with your generals. You also want to make sure that they will engage in the combat, right? Every every battle, because, um, you know, they don't have to be stuck in the combat forever, because then they might get grievously injured this injured in battle trait um but if you don't get them into battle often enough they might get the trait like dislikes blood or they might get uh coward like some of the cowardice traits you know stuff like that so you want to make sure that your generals are involved in the fighting they're not just sitting back um and of course you want to try and win because (laughs) the more winning you do with your generals the better traits they're gonna get if your general runs from the battle as well they're gonna get certain traits based on that like uh, you know obviously um uh, sort of cowardice traits if they are in the thick of it fighting and win the victory in the end they're gonna get really good traits so you gotta make sure that you are careful with your general and of course you know all these traits well not all of them but a lot of them are leveled too so um can you go up and down levels lucitanio or is it just up levels well um, for most uh, commands and general traits yes you can go up and down like good commander bad commander good tactician bad tactician good strategist bad strategist there are others that just stay with them um, but of course injured in battle if you just wait one turn he will recover Mm. Unless there is always a chance that he actually might get uh, more injured than that. Say. <laughs> um, we don't want our general to lose a, a leg, right? <laughs> yeah. Or become lame. Um, but uh, it can happen now. Uh, like your general can uh, become lame in, in his leg, for example, and he will even get uh, an epithet saying the lame. 
Yeah. And uh, minus two uh, hit points for him. So it really depends. But yeah. um, there's also nice uh, traits that he can get, which uh, actually has been inspired in Alexander. And uh, basically can become a good fighter. That is... Um, um, if you if your general if you leave him uh, like uh, the chaos of of fight, and uh, he actually is able to kill a few enemies, let's say, he will be able to get that trait, which will make him a good um, like a better fighter, improve his bodyguard, and uh, later levels will even give him more hit hit points, and even the last one more morale, because. Everyone wants to be in the great general. That's like uh, Achilles reborn, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's really cool. They can, you know, if they, you, if you get them really nearly dead as well, they can get scarred, that sort of thing. So everything you do on the battlefield does actually matter to the traits and to how they're going to fare later down the line, guys. Of course, uh, of course, as well. And I do like the fact that they can go down and up. So. Um, but obviously if your general's, you know, an eight star general and he's got loads of good traits and you lose one battle against overwhelming odds, it's not like they're going to then be a minus five morale, minus two command general, you know, these things are graduated and they take time to build up or build down. So if you are losing one battle after the other, of course, it's going to be more likely that you're going to get more negative traits or go down the graduated, uh, scale. Whereas if you're, you know, you win five battles, lose one, it's not like your general's just suddenly going to be the worst general in history. <laughs> so um, that is cool. But do remember that, guys. You don't, you know, every single battle doesn't need to be a heroic victory for you to keep your generals on the right path. Yeah, that's pretty much true. Like, um, uh, it's a process, let's say. Takes time. But... Um... Eventually, if you keep investing in your generals, they will get some really nice traits. Yeah, definitely. Right. And, and um, this guy here, so Chaos the Elder, he's a veteran commando, which is pretty good. I like that quite a, quite a bit. Despises trouser wearers. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That is cool. That is really cool. Um... So yeah, so should we move on to sort of like more management traits then? So as you can see here, a Chaos the Elder, he has Epiton, Epikina, Tu, Tauru, Pragmaton. Yep, said that completely right. Um, but he is the Viceroy or Chief officially in charge over all things across from the Taurus Mountain. So like the Seleucids and a few of these other larger empires get these really cool like satrapy traits. Um, let's see if we can find one in Mesopotamia. It'd probably be in Seleucia, right? This guy's only 21, though. But he is the uh, satrap of yep. Babylonia. Uh, and you can actually move these around, guys. So, like, if you're like, this 21-year-old is, uh, is not the right guy for the job, you can move them around and say, oh, this guy, and we'll move, uh, we can move it across to him. So... Do remember you can do that as well if you are not happy with them. The best thing, the easiest way to do it rather than that screen is to normally drag. Can you not drag this? I thought you could drag this. I thought you could drag the trait. Sadly, sadly you, you can't. Uh, like the original Rome Total War you could, but uh, for some reason they decided to not have that option anymore. It's Yeah. So you really have to go through that, which is, uh, yeah. Uh, I don't want to like criticize it. It's not <laughs> really not the best thing, but I do love what uh, Feral team did with adding all these options. So yeah. it's such uh, a. So if you want to yeah. move move a trait, guys, you just press on who you want to move it to, and then you find the followers down here on the list. You can also search for what what they actually do, and then you just click it. Uh, so there shouldn't be many of these. So you can see Satrap of Babylonia. If I click on that, confirm. It's going to take nine turns to get there. So, like I say, it's better if they are right next to each other because it'll do that instantly. But um, you can do that and you can move those traits around. Uh, not traits, sorry, followers around 
um, shall we say. So there's a load of really cool traits in here. Should we just have a look at a random random general? Give me a give me a city. Give me a Seleucid city, and we'll have a look at what one of these guys is like. Yeah, well, usually cities there, right where you are in the Anatolia. They should be good cities to take a look, especially as there might be some cool new Anatolian uh, traits. But uh, like, uh, some of the traits are faction specific of or culture specific, so it really depends. Yeah, cool. Let's have a look at this guy. He's got clean hands. He, this man understands the need to keep his own hands clean. Fair enough. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, Green Commander. Green Commander, of course. There's also a couple of Celtic guys I noticed in here somewhere. Probably, obviously, Galatians. Where were they? I can't actually remember. Were they around here? Have they all Have they all disappeared now? <laughs> I can't remember where they were. Uh, maybe one of these. Oh, well, we've got an Iranian guy here. Mithris, who likes rhymes. And uh, is an outstanding speaker, obsessional trader. He's actually really good. <laughs> He's ignorant, though, which isn't good. He's selfish and pessimistic, which also isn't good. Uh, but he is open-minded. So, uh, yeah, that's good. So there is loads... A nice feature. Which was his uh, portrait. Because uh, now uh, starting generals will have different portraits according to their culture. Which yeah, is pretty nice. This guy's interesting though. We've got Timarcos the Morbid over here, <laughs> who is melancholic and minus four morale for troops on the battlefield. So you definitely don't want to take him to the battlefield <laughs> at all. He likes strangers, um, even though he is melancholic. He's basically uh, what's what's that what's that guy called from? Uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to... Is it Hitchhiker's Guide to Gatsby? Uh, Marvin the Paranoid Android. What's that from? I can't remember, but I've seen clips of it. Sleeps while watching dramas. He doesn't like dramas. Uh, but he does understand strategy. He has night terrors, even though... Well, that's probably because he's so melancholic. Uh, <laughs> uh, he's hale and hearty as well. So he's got good health, even though he is very uh, melancholic. So yeah, this guy is a really interesting character. <laughs> And I just love reading through these and, and seeing what these people are like, um, like in here. Like this guy is a Silesian as well, which is cool. Uh, but yeah, I just think it's fantastic. All of these sorts of new traits that are in there. Really nice indeed. Shall we have a look at the um, Archon of Alexandria here? Yeah, let's show it. Because... Uh, yeah. We, uh, you conquer it uh, off camera, let's say, <laughs> and he actually got some really nice uh, uh, traits. So we have the conqueror of Alexandria trait, which gives him a plus one influence. Now, because he spent one turn in Alexandria, he's now the Archon of Alexandria. Of course, technically, he's the faction leader. So Archon will be like governors assigned by the faction leaders. But this is a bit of a game limitation. Uh, we we could prevent it. Um, we could prevent faction leaders to become archons of their cities, but uh, like they could also be governors of the city. So it's we will need to discuss that. But um, yeah, you also have here there a pretty nice uh, trait. Uh, can you scroll a bit down? Oh, sorry, I didn't realize it had gone uh, there. Oh, this one, yeah. Okay, yeah, that one. So basically that's a trait that I kind of had it secretly and uh, didn't mention it. But uh, if uh, the fans follow the, the video until now, they will find it, it now. Uh, otherwise, they will find it when they finally conquer Alexandria. So some factions like uh, the... Uh, the Antigonids and the Seleucids, they will get that trait to return Alexander to their homelands. Of course, Antigonids will need to return Alexander's body to Pella. Seleucids will need to return to Seleucia. Hmm. And uh, yeah, if, um, as it says there, it explains uh, 
the story and then it tells you that to complete the mission to return Ale Alexandros uh, you need to re destroy the, the thumb of course it's already destroyed so now you just need to spend uh, one turn in Alexandria and then your journey back to to the capital will start cool and what do, do you get anything do you get any uh, special trait after that or yeah it's a quite a funny mission although I think you have the might have the wrong description there let me just take a look as it was mentioning Pella yeah and, I've, and for this list it should be um, Seleucia well, uh, yeah, no, that's that's a cool little secret trait, though. Nice little tidbit for you guys if you want to do that, uh, which is really okay. cool. And uh, we can we can wait a turn and remove him back to uh, to Alexandria, actually, if if we want to. Um, but yeah, we'll just press to the end turn, guys, just so we can see any new traits that are popping out, um, which is really cool. Uh, and you can see definitely when you play like one of these bigger nations we we were obviously playing behind the scenes and like just going through a few turns dear friend oh go go away anatolians <laughs> uh we we're just playing a few turns and there's there's loads of governors getting more and more traits uh, as the time goes the on shed. our thanks um so yeah which is which is really nice to see um and your governors just seem a lot more dynamic now uh, and are growing a lot and obviously that's combined with the fact that all the remastered areas pretty much nearly all the factions will have governors in every city um so you're going to have a lot more chance to play around with these traits and play around with governors and see what uh see what you want to do yeah that's right it's a really fun system and i hope the fans enjoy it in the next version it has a, a lot of stuff I hope, really hope that it's not overwhelming for for some. So let's see the one, the most important thing that uh, Rome Remastered brought us. Well, one of the most, not not the most, I would say, <laughs> is that uh, you can just click on the general and see all the effects that he has. Yeah. Uh, which is really cool and useful, so that you don't need to scroll down to all the traits. Uh, can you actually check his ancillaries? I think he has a nice one. Okay, just uh, Euclid. Yeah, we also had a few uh, statues ancillaries for some famous uh, Greek phil philosophers and characters. But um, I'm still considering replacing it with the uh, game characters, as I did with, as you can see there, with mm. Car Caris of Lindos. But uh, yeah, uh, now you can see all the effects, which is also a bit uh, of a pain for me. <laughs> That's <laughs> uh, Why so? Because uh, like for all other mods, uh, developers could just uh, you know just keep adding traits with effects, and uh, honestly, no one would really like notice how many effects all these old stack in a general like uh, they wouldn't notice but for example when the developers first uh, were first working on on rome imperium surrectum and they merged the um, traits from roma surrectum the roman generals they would get like 20 influence 20 management <laughs> 20 command that's crazy so I've done a lot of work with that, but uh, it's still incredibly hard to prevent uh, one of your generals to reach uh, like 30 years and uh, have 10 command. Because if you keep using him to conquer cities, well, that's going to happen. Yeah. But hey, Alexander did it. Why can't your general do it as well? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, like a lot of work has gone into balancing them and... I don't know. I think it's I think it's cool getting your commander up pretty quickly, especially if they are winning heroic victory after heroic victory, um, which is yeah nice, really good, and good fun as well. Good fun as well, um, which is really cool. I think we've covered. Is there anything else you want to cover traits wise and ancillary wise um, in terms of anything else we want to have a look at while we're here? 
Honestly, that's pretty much it. Uh, we have touched most of the of the things that we have. Uh, some factions now have some more factions now have uh, dynasty traits, which you also mentioned it. But now we also have for Pontos, for example, which is cool. But uh, that's mostly it. Uh, I hope players will be able to play some Anatolian factions and see the new ancillaries because. Uh, some of them are really fun and well researched by Mozolos and Iwata, like Hecarian Honey Merchants, uh, yeah. T-Rex Javelin Makers, T-Rex Fragrance <laughs> Producer. Really fun, and uh, it will add a lot to your campaigns. Yeah, definitely. Um, let me just uh, show you one last thing then, guys, as well, when we talk about the Dynasty traits. Well, I was going to show you that the, uh, all of the these... Um, uh, Diadochi dynasties now have uh, now have their own um, their own trees. There has been a major rework on trees. Like um, many factions have added uh, like more wives to the generals, ah. so that you won't see uh, what you're seeing right now with uh, that many generals just not having any wives. Okay, nice. Nice. Yeah, so so like all of these um all of these historical dynasties have now their dynasties um going back as well as far as they we can trace them historically and they are as far as they can be historically accurate now which is uh which is really cool um to see. So we've got Seleucus up there, Seleucus the first Nicator, we've got Antiochus the first and then maybe Seleucus the second, but I believe it was was it not Antiochus the second after Antiochus the first? So maybe you need to kill off Seleucus, but <laughs> that's up to you guys to do in a battle somewhere. But we can, um, I think, I think the uh, the Antigonid one is quite, quite, uh, quite goes quite back quite far, doesn't it? So we can have a quick look at that one. Uh, yeah, it does, that, it does a lot of historical characters there. It's just really nice to uh, to see this and to see the historical like detail that goes into the mod once again because like this doesn't need to be here, guys. Like it doesn't need to go back all the way to Carius the Macedonian uh, or Antigonus Monothalmus or Demetrius Polycortes. It could just start with Antigonus here. Like it doesn't need to have all these people on here. But it does just because of the detail if you're a history stan and you can have a look. So I just think that's that's really, um, really cool. And did you say you wanted to have a look at Pontus as well? Yes, just to check the um, dynasty yeah. trade. Because it's quite a cool one. And uh, it's a way that you will be able to track your main uh, dynasty just by looking at that trait. Yeah, which some some other factions have as well. So it's really nice feature. We go it's, into. Um, oh my god, the AI has not been managing this place well, unless they have just taken Petraea. Maybe they have to take. I think they might have ha actually taken Petraea. To be fair, I'm assuming we're going to Mithridates the Builder. Here we go. Uh, so he is, of course, a true Iranian because the Pontix. The, the, not the Pontics, the Pontus. The Pontus? Yeah, the Pontic people of Pontus, the rulers of Pontus, were actually Iranian, whereas the people are here Cappadocian, uh, which I think is a nice little tidbit as well. Uh, are we are we looking at Mithridated here? Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's quite a nice description, really um, well accurate, I would say. Yeah, and uh, well, that's pretty much it. Um, we can check if they have uh, gained any other fun traits, but uh, it's already pretty cool. Yeah, no, I think it's fantastic. I've, we've gone over a lot. The thing is, the thing is, guys, everyone watching at home, the thing with traits is they're all dynamic, <laughs> so like uh, we we can't we can't control exactly what traits are going to show up with these with these people, and I think that's part of the fun when you guys are playing, obviously, as well. You can do as much as you can to uh, influence it, but if you stick your guy in a city with a tavern for too long, 
he might become a drunk still so, <laughs> so you know you've got to you've got to have a look at it and it is worth noting that uh, all of these sort of dynasties these famous dynasties the lysiads the antigonids the seleucids the ptolemies they all have um they all have these dynasty traits uh, which give them some specific uh, bonuses for being that famous fam- famous famous dynasty uh, which is really cool. So you can keep track of your dynasty through that way and also get some nice little extra bonuses for being of that dynasty too, which is uh, which is really cool. Um, fantastic. Well, I think that's everything, isn't it? Uh, unless there's anything else you want to uh, you want to show off? Yeah, that's pretty much it. It's going to be f- also fun because uh, uh, if you scroll down, you see that a lot of traits have been renamed. And the descriptions improve. So for uh, many players, well, for most players, I would say, it's going to be a whole new experience because uh, many were uh, vanilla traits with the descriptions. And also yeah. now it's like starting a completely new game, uh, even not quite understanding how uh, some traits are, what's the next level. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, definitely. And like you say, with all the additional traits and followers, um and all the different you know sort of bonuses and penalties depending on how they are personality wise how they are in their uh you know personality and how they act as a governor and on the battle map i think it's going to be awesome to see how your guys either grow into being a great <laughs> a great leader and a, a great man or just go down the route of corruption and debauchery <laughs> Um, so yeah I, I'm really looking forward to it it's going to be really fun and of course gives you guys so much opportunity to role play if you want to if you want to so uh, yeah I think it's fantastic yeah I agree <laughs> yeah and that's it so, well what a glorious conversation that we had Red. <laughs> once again another glorious conversation and thank you for showing off the glorious traits that you have put obviously so much time and effort into. I think they're absolutely amazing. So thank you to you once again, and obviously to everyone else that helped you out and the historians for their histor- historical input. Um, I think they're really cool. And I think it's something that, you know, uh, people are going to love, especially everyone who loves to role play. It's going to be really, really fun. So thank you very much, Lusitanio. Thank you for joining us here today. You're welcome. It's been a pleasure talking with you. And yeah. Have a nice uh, rest of your day, man. Yeah, you too. Thank you very much. And if you enjoyed this video, guys, of course, a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated. Comment down below your favorite trait you saw today. That would be awesome. And uh, comment down below whether you'll be role playing or not as well. So thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, as always. And I will see you all again on the next video.